and we are live 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 on the internet uh facebook youtube twitter and twitch thank you for joining us uh non-alcoholic beer talk today brian yes. we have ted fleming here ted the founder of partake brewing uh ted thanks for joining us thanks for having me on guys great to be uh, great to be on the show absolutely going to be a good dabbling in our non-alcoholic beers we just looked in our fridge we have a decent selection we do yeah so any of our friends that are listening that are non-alcoholic the the cork brothers uh local group that is big in the uh video arena in lifestyle events one of them is a non-alcoholic guy so he, oh yeah he could come out here and he's got a selection exactly we we do actually have a pretty and decent selection, and we have yeah. uh ted thank you so much we've got a great selection of partake right now to partake so fantastic we're going to do that as we chat here. So non-alcoholic beer with the beer guys. We get a little uh, wrinkled brows occasionally when we talk non-alcoholic beer. The beer guys talking non-alcoholic beer. but Yeah, that if down. you drink some of the beer, it'll smooth those wrinkles right out. That's yeah, it. We'll that do what we want. Don't tell us how to live our That's lives. That's right. Yeah. Pour right. a little on your forehead and then drink the rest. It'll be good. That's it. Yep. Absolutely. Ted, uh, I think we're going to get here into the show of uh, – Live stream viewers, if you have any questions for us or for Ted, any comments on NA beers or or what you're drinking, leave it in the comments, and uh, we'll be back when we break, and we'll chat with you. We'd love to hear what you have to say. So with that said, Ted, you ready to do some radio? Let's do it. Here we go. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week, we're talking with Partake Brewing. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. So joining us today, we have Ted Fleming, the founder and CEO of Partake. We're going to talk about limes, dragons, and award-winning non-alcoholic craft beers. Ted, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, guys. Great to be here. Absolutely. You know, it sounds like we got all the bases covered there with what uh, Brian set us up for. Yeah, all, limes and dragons and non-alcoholic beers. Perfect. topics there. Very good. Very good. Ted, again... We appreciate you joining us. Uh, we do enjoy our non-alcoholic beers. We've uh, talked about them a good bit for some guys that are named the beer guys. So we talk a, a good bit about non-alcoholic. and But we've got something unique with you. You are based in Canada, correct? That's right. I'm in uh, Calgary, Alberta, where it's uh, already snowing. Already? Wow. wow. <laughs> uh, we are, as mentioned, Marietta, Georgia, Atlanta suburbs. It was 84 degrees today at my house so no snow in case i needed to uh, to throw that out there but uh i wouldn't mind seeing some snow yeah from a distance from like a pictures distance. of it yeah, yeah. that's it we'll get that's ted right. to send us some pictures <laughs> just that'll live good, stream right? it to us yeah that's, that'll be great yeah. Yes. yeah but with that said ted uh, canada you're all over canada and uh, been in the u.s for a couple years but you're expanding within the u.s the craft or non-alcoholic craft is really growing here correct yeah, it's growing both in in Canada and the U.S. It's uh, it's perhaps the fastest growing category within beer. So pretty exciting times. Of course, it's uh, it's a new category, so growing from a lower level. But you know, um, if you take a look at a retailer like Total Wine, what was on the shelf a few years ago compared to today, it's a it's a world of difference. And for people like me that have had to give up alcohol, love craft beer, it's a it's a great time to be um, be in the space. Absolutely. You know, I look back at some of your pictures and correct me if I'm wrong, but did I see you sipping a Texas select at one point? Do you recall that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I actually started, I started in the non-alcoholic business in 2013 and I, okay. I started as an importer of non-alcoholic beers, largely from Europe, but I had a few U S brands and Texas select uh, was one of those. If I'm not mistaken, Texas select has been around quite a while as one of the first non big beer brands. And you know, this story, Brian, oh, yeah, I'll do yeah. the abbreviated version, but I believe I was about 12 years old and went in a health food store with a friend and they had Texas select cans in there. And we thought we were, we tried to buy it. We thought maybe they wouldn't let us, but they let us. 
So we bought it. We walked down the street, popped the top and shared it. Me and my 12 year old friend. And we get a hundred yards down the road and a policeman pulls up behind us and flips these lights on. And he, <laughs> he quote unquote pulls us over the two 12 year olds walking down the street. And we get a little interrogation there as to what we're doing, walking down the street, sharing a beer. And so we showed him what we had there and he, he let us go with a warning. So we, <laughs> we did not get arrested. I have no criminal record. We got away with that. But when I saw the Texas select, I'm like, wow, I know that beer. I know that beer. Good memories. I'm Good curious memories. back in those days, back before Partake existed, what was your favorite? What was the best uh, non-alcoholic out there on the market that was available? Yeah, I liked, I liked a lot of the beers that were coming out, out of Europe, uh, Germany in particular. Kronbacher was a favorite. Um, I liked Erd Erdinger, the wheat beer. So, yeah, I think Germany Germany was a few years ahead of where, where we are at in yeah. North America, but we're catching up fast. Well, that's Brian. I don't remember who it was we were talking with, but they mentioned going to to get the brewing degree in Germany, in, like in the eighties. And we're talking about what well, they call them alcohol free or something the, in Germany. Yeah. But he was talking about brewing the NA beers then, and I had no idea that the NA went back that far. Do you remember who that was that we were speaking with? I don't, but I remember that. I I I didn't up in that until that point realize that Germany had any interest in that, and then that they were right. doing it. They were actually good at it. You know, I'm like. I didn't even, it was not even something that was a blip on my radar. I'm like, that's amazing that they've been doing it that even long. Of course it would be Oktoberfest. Yeah. You yeah. Get you one. So Ted in the U S how much of the U S do you cover now? We cover the entire U S from an e-commerce perspective. So you can buy us online, get it shipped to your house. Um, from a retail perspective, we're in about 24 States right now. Okay. Um, and looking to fill in uh, the remaining States in the next uh, year to year and a half. Okay, gotcha. You know, right now I should throw this out there. We're going to get into the beer list here in just a moment, but we're sipping the lime. Yeah. Which you said is probably comparable to like a light lager with some lime in it, right? Yes. Okay. Tasty. Yeah, Very tasty. Refreshing. Yeah. Clean, refreshing, a little bit of lime. Lime's not overdone. Sometimes lime and beers can just, you know, get a little too much, but this would be really great. Maybe some chips and salsa. Oh, yeah. It'd be perfect. Some with nachos. That. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed there was like a, a a texture to the label. Is that so when you're you know doing some sort of athletic sports, it doesn't slip out of your hand, so you can be running and drinking at the same time without losing a grip on the can? Is that what that's there for? Yeah, that's it's really helpful for that. But uh, it, it's yeah. more it's more around it being small batches for us and being able to label the cans uh, with ah. that than than uh, for sports. But that's that's a great application. I'll. Uh, I'll take that. You can use that. Yeah, I'd like to see that. a whole soccer team. They're all running around kicking, and they ha all have cans in their hands. They're all drinking at the same. That'd be amazing. Try Partake Brewing in the new Sports <laughs> Grip can. <laughs> sports see? Grip can. There you go. You're set, man. Good stuff. Well, Tim, I think it's time for us to get into the beers of the week. Now it's time for our beers of the week. Brought to you by The Nest. Craft beer and barbecue in downtown Kennesaw, Georgia. TheNestKennesaw.com. Brian, a great list of non-alcoholic beers to enjoy today. As mentioned, we are currently sipping the lime, a new uh, new release from, from Partake. We got a special one, Brian. We have a peach goza here, which is coming back, but we still have one that's been chilling In for the a fridge, while. Yeah. So we're gonna see, we're gonna check that out. We also have the full core lineup, which is their blonde, their pale, their IPA, a red, and a dark which is for the stout lovers out there, bro. And so we've got it all. And again, thank you to the nest. Good friends over there doing good things, barbecue, beer, wings, nachos, grab you a partake, get you some nachos to go from the nest, kick back and have a good time with a Absolutely. partake line. So yeah. Brian, why don't you tell us what's happening in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Okay, so I found some interesting non-alcoholic beverage stats. It, it just happened to be an article this week. Good timing. Uh, low and no alcohol market in the U.S. is predicted to grow 23.5% annually through 2025, according to IS, IWSR Drinks Market Analysis. Uh, you might assume that this was driven by health concerns over the pandemic, but the market was already growing at a good rate prior to the pandemic. And the growth was driven, it's driven mostly by beer and RTD cock, uh, cocktail categories, ready to drink stuff, with non-alcoholic beer actually being the key driver at about 90% of the total volume of this little market share. Uh, 
the male and female split for no, no and low alcoholic products is fairly even despite the uh, impressive growth. The no and low alcohol share of the whole market is still pretty small, as we were talking about earlier. Just like something like 25 million cases in 2020, which is not a lot compared to the entire market. There's pl still plenty of room for them to grow. And these numbers seem to indicate that consumers are typically not going exclusively non-alcoholic. They're instead mixing these beverages in with what they're already drinking, kind of like I do. You know, you just... Sure. Either uh, there's been a few times at lunch, you know, I'm, I'm working. I'm like, I want something that tastes like beer, but I'm not going to drink any alcohol right, right now. Or I'm drinking and I want to pace it. I'm going to I'm going to mix in a non-alcoholic beer in there. So strategies. Exactly. Yeah. Enjoying a little bottle sharing at the studio. Maybe we need to pace it out a little bit and still want to have a drink. So they work out well for that. I see that we have uh, our friend Greg Tish, who has went oh, to yes. a non-alcoholic lifestyle. Indeed. And he enjoys that. Uh, we have a friend in uh, Texas, Seth. Shout out to Seth. Who That's is, right, Seth. He's just decided twenty dry 2021, Ted. No sober October. He's going all 2020. That's right. 2021. Wow. Amazing. Now, he is already planning his beers for January, though. I will say yeah. that. But <laughs> 2021 is dry. And he's been taking a lot of our recommendations. He's yes, a good buddy sure. of ours. So we see him, what, what he's bringing back all the time based upon what we've been talking about. So, yeah, it's, it's great. Good stuff. So I've got a few more statistics. According to the Brewers Association, U.S. brewery owners are 93.5% white and 75.6% male. These are probably stats that really won't uh, surprise too many people, but the Brewers Association arrived at these numbers by randomly surveying 500 breweries, of which only 136 responded. I'm kind of curious what the numbers would have been had everybody responded, but that doesn't work that way in these surveys. The, the BA notes that beverage alcohol consumers are increasingly not male and not white, and also that uh, female drinkers under 25 actually outnumber male drinkers under 25 by a decent margin. So there's a lot stuff. of interesting things. These are things to keep in mind if you want to continue doing healthy business. You have to realize your consumer base is changing. It so, is, right. Yeah. Work to your market. Realize who's out there. Sure exactly. Enough, you are listening to the Beer Guys radio show. We do need to take us a break, but we'll be back very soon with more from Partake Brewing. Do, do, do. Ted, by any chance, do you have a messaging app on that's giving you notifications? Yeah, it's I'm a bit trying of a, to figure out how to get rid of that. Bit of a click, yep. click. Um, Ted, I'm just, we got a question for you here. Let's see. We got one from Kyle W. So do you ship outside the U.S.? We ship in Canada uh, and the U.S., but not into Asia or, or Europe at this point. So just strictly North America. Are there plans to go overseas, uh, more international with Partake? I think there are. We don't have any definitive plans right now, so we can't oh. speak to exact dates. But uh, right. we'd love to become a global brand at some point. Aspirations, right, Ted? Exactly. You Gotta said you said stuff. North America. Does that include Mexico as well, or is that you haven't quite expanded that far south yet? We don't uh, we don't have an active e commerce program into Mexico quite yet, but we've we've made some special uh, special arrangements arrangements for certain uh, certain customers. Okay. Okay. Cool. Ken. Ken is here. Hi, Ken. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Ken is a, a good friend, local local friend of the show. He That's is right. a Bruriana collector, which yes. is always a tough word to, for me to say, but he Bruriana. has an extremely impressive collection of a uh, Georgia beer memorabilia. It's easier to say that when you've been drinking non-alcoholic right, beers, have it, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Exactly. It makes it a little easier. Prime for say. better enunciation here. Slur right through it if you've had too many regular beers. Ted, what are you sipping on? What's in yeah. your glass? Yeah, what's in my glass? I am I am drinking a lot of the peach goza. Even though it is freezing here, I still yeah. kind of mentally put myself in Georgia and, and enjoy it. There you go. And enjoy Join the us. light, uh, light summer flavor of the. There you the go. Cold, so. Okay, just just throw a few more layers on. That's that's all it takes. So in the in the uh, the summer when we're drinking stouts, when everybody's thinking light beers, I, I'm just turning the air conditioning down. In the in the winter, just light a fire and you know put on a few more uh, layers, and there you go. I could crush up these limes. Yeah, these partake limes. Mow in the yard. Yep. Run in marathons as I do. Yes. And if I do. get sweaty, I got the grip tape. That's right. It's the, grip, the, tape, the grip label, gonna, the special I'm grip label. I'm going to be good to go there. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy that one, Ted. Yeah, the lime is really nice. Thank you. You bet. 
You bet. Our sound guy ran away. He did. Yes. We would ordinarily. There he is. There he is. There he is. Soon we will be into the, One the day, next segment. One day our sound guy will come. That's right. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi there. No Mike Nate. No Mike Nate. For a we, while there, I thought it was going to be no attendance, Nate. I don't know. Right. No <laughs> attendance, Nate. That's too much to fit on a business card. Right. So, Ted, what should we go to next, man? Uh, blonde? Uh, oh, Peach Joey. Goza? Yeah, let's do the blonde next. Like, the blonde is a, a base into. Right. And, and it actually it works there. as a base for some of the other beers, like the lime. So, I see Joey, Joey's true in there. stuff. Yeah. True stuff. Yeah. Joey's talking about the Peach Goza sounding good. He is correct. Joseph Winsler. I think the blonde is the the very first partake we ever I ever had. I think so. When we first I think that's had the first one I saw down here. Something here. Pop, pop, pop. They're on to a thing or two. Yes, it was uh you know, we can get into this show. I don't want to ruin I don't want to take up our show content here, chatting here, but uh like referring to Brian's stats. Um I still think there are people who shrug their noses at a non-alcoholic beer just because of past experiences and, and perceptions of what that is. Now you still got your guys that if it doesn't have alcohol in it, there's no point. Uh, I'll tell you a fun story, Ted. So we had a non-alcoholic beer maker that was a sponsor, uh, ran ads on our show and, uh, we've had them all athletic, you know, I'm sure you, you, but, uh, we had, so I had someone message me on Instagram. And he's like, I, he was angry, Ted. He was angry. <laughs> and he said, you know, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about with these. I tried one. It's one of the worst things I've had. And he went, I was like, hey, man, we we enjoy them. You know, we enjoy the non-alcoholic beer. And I think he closed with something. Like, he's like, ah, well, you guys do what you got to do. I, I know you got to. I know you need to make money. And I'm like, that's, well, that's not really <laughs> it. But there's people out there that are still mad about non-alcoholic beer. You know, just it's, it's just its existence. I will. I will say that the if they weren't ca cautious, if they got the uh, the run wild and they they got one they've been sitting on the shelf for a while, it, those hops do fade. They do like yeah. any beer. Drink, yeah. keep cold, uh, drink fresh. Exactly. So yeah. it's that would be one of the things I would say to them, but they'd already made up their mind. Their mind, yeah, it was done. There was no saving yeah. that one. It's 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 a lot different though. From you know when I started in <laughs> in 2013. Right. I, got, I got that all the time. Like today, yeah, yeah. you still, you still get it today, but it's, it's much further and farther between. And right. You know, I think it, I just speak, I think it just speaks to the, the more uh, broader acceptance of non-alc and you're still going to get those, those naysayers who aren't uh, open to it yet, but you know, it's changed a lot and it's changed a lot in a positive way over, over the last five, five, 10 years. Sure. And you get, uh, you know, more people that over time, I know we had one of our listeners that he's like, okay, guys, I've heard you talk about it for too long. I had to try it. You know, went out and got a non-alcoholic non beer. And I said, what did you think? He's like, I would easily add this to my rotation. It's like, there you go. You know, you've been avoiding it and all that. You go try one. He's like, I didn't know in a beer could taste like this. Yeah. Yeah. And this, yeah. It, it doesn't have to be your favorite beer. You can still drink your favorite beers. You could just, I think that, I think that there might be the expectation if you start drinking those that uh, you're kind of locked into them. No, you're not. You're not locked right. in them. At least you can have them and still switch back to whatever else. There's you know? nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with having. Nobody a is NA. going to arrest you for drinking one and then going back to regular beer. You know. <laughs> what if they did though? <laughs> thank, I mean, thank that, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> I would have already been thrown in jail because now, I've done that a lot. If you go out and you have a few NAs with dinner and you drive home and you get pulled over for something, you may have some explaining to do well if you have all the but, empty cans in your back seat yes then you probably really do yeah or but. if you're 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 fragrant brian if you're a little fragrant oh yeah you have to. Well, these are fairly light i don't I no, how it much would be the hopping i mean you don't have the alcohol i don't smell. and i don't think the the police are trained to detect the aroma of hops you know as much as they are he, the he's like look those are idaho sevens i know that's that like, i know that anywhere you're a liar i know yeah. you've been drinking it's like not alcohol yeah. it's like, i swear i swear i swear it's an a ah good stuff all right Ted, we'll just go off into our own little world of insanity here <laughs> if we're not stopped. So, uh, good deal. Kyle, Ken, Joseph, thanks for your comments. Thanks for joining us there. Uh, again, Kyle, just in case, you know what? Put this in the chat there if you would for him. No, Mike, Nate, just in case, you know, he moves on so others may know. But, uh, yes, Kyle, to answer your question, uh, U.S., Canada, right now, 
aspirations of being an international player. Is that correct, Ted? But no That's plans, it. no solid plans as of yet. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't have dates on the calendar for that, but uh, it right. is an aspiration as a company. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Give him a lot to type. I, well, I, I and he's not a typist. I, well, I didn't know he was going to dictate, but I appreciate that he's being thorough in the response there. So, <laughs> but aspirations yeah. to expand to Europe. <laughs> there you go, man. There you That's go. It. Perfect. Perfect. No, Mike Nate is on the ball, man. A plus service. <laughs> a plus service. Cool. All right. All right. Let's get back into some radio. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. What in Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Remember, all episodes are available on demand, so if you miss the broadcast, get the podcast. Beer Guys Radio is available on all popular and unpopular podcasting apps. Now let's get back to Partake Brewing. Ted Fleming, Partake Brewing founder there. Thank you again for joining us. And we want to hear, Ted, what brought you to the world of non-alcoholic beers. Sure. So for me, it was um, just a matter of fate in, in some ways. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease back in 2005, was just starting at that time to get into the craft beer movement. Uh, I was living in Toronto, Toronto, Canada at the time. Really exciting time to be in, in involved in the craft beer space. So many breweries opening up, so many new flavors. Um, it seemed like every week there was, there was something new to try in town. And I was trying to live with this new diagnosis and also, you know, enjoy life. And it eventually came to a head in 2010. I was hospitalized and came to the realization that alcohol and me weren't going to have a long-term relationship and I had to move away from it. And, um, you know, that was, that was difficult. I, I struggled giving up alcohol because there weren't great alternatives on the beer side. Um, and so many things we do socially, whether it was play, having a beer after sport, you know, family occasion, just getting together with your buddies, your friends, um, a lot of it revolved around having a drink. And when you're not drinking alcohol, it's it's hard. And so, you know, I started trying to trying to solve that problem in 2013 with my online store and importing product from Europe, which was further ahead. And then it so happened that I, I built a community really around people who were suffering from that same, same issue, the same stig stigma that you know, non-drinkers suffered from, and they started seeing me as a bit, as a leader in that space. And they they said, "Hey, Ted, can you get can you get craft non-alk beer?" And I looked around. I asked various breweries to partner with me. Um, everyone said, "No, it's not going to work. It's it's a dumb idea." So, you know, being the entrepreneur that I am, I just pursued it anyways. And uh, you know, I got to thank my community that kind of pushed me in that direction. They supported me through. A Kickstarter campaign where we launched our IPA. We had an incredibly successful campaign. We even had people who said, "Hey, I hate IPA, but I'm going to buy five cases because, you know, you're really actually doing something that's going to help me in the long term when you when you do a stout or when you do a red ale." So um, that's kind of the background story of how I started, and it's a very personal thing for me. And I'm I'm very happy that I've solved solved the issue for me, but also in so doing, solved it for hundreds and thousands of other people. Absolutely. That's good. Cool. Now you were talking about kind of the growth and the community and everywhere you went with that. Uh, you also, you pitched your product to Dragon's Den, correct? And for those that don't know, Dragon's Den is kind of the Canadian equivalent of, um, Shark a, of Shark Tank, Tank here in yeah. the States, right? Okay. How'd that go? And I imagine being on Dragon's Den that our setup here and that is very familiar to you. Probably yeah. very similar to the Dragon's Den, correct? <laughs> exactly the same. It's yeah. Good. Good. Nightmares. You're right. We do have that presence, just like those we guys do. on the shows. Yeah. yeah so yeah. How, how was that though? How was it? Did you get funded? Uh, we got a deal on, okay. on gotcha. TV. All um, right. It didn't consummate at the end of the day, the day okay. but it was a yeah. great experience. I would I would highly recommend uh, doing that for any aspiring entrepreneur. I think you know any opportunity to tell your story and and talk about your business is is something you should take advantage of. So 
Um, yeah, great experience. Definitely nerve wracking. I think the hardest part is, you know, I, I think I waited five or six hours in the green room just sure. waiting to, yeah. to take your turn. Like that's, that's the hardest part, I think, but, oh, uh, yeah. you know, great experience allows you to tell your story. And I think I have a great story to tell. So happy to do that. Right. You know, and, the and best part of that story is he bicycled in the rain to the studio. I, is that, is that right? You were, you got <laughs> rained on and you were soaking wet when you arrived. Okay. <laughs> for okay. Your yeah. thing. Maybe, maybe that's why they gave me six hours to dry off. There you go and set in the room. Go there. take a shower. We'll give you some towels. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty. And you know, I'd heard again, you've got a platform like Dragon's Den, even if the deal doesn't close at the end, that's some pretty good marketing there. So, and I didn't realize I've talked to a couple people that have been on like the Shark Tanks. And I didn't realize that, you know, yeah. several of those deals do not finally close out, you know, at the end, you know, despite what we see on the edited version. True. What true. There. Yeah. And, and I, I know that it makes a big influence on uh, sales because I've gone out and bought some products sure. as a result of seeing them that they yeah. didn't get a deal. And in fact, in some cases they were told they were dumb and I'm like, I like that product. I'm I've see done if I it. Find I've it. Googled yeah. and found them yeah. and it's like, yeah. Oh, I really think that's pretty cool. Good stuff. So were you back before the, your diagnosis, did you get as far into craft beer to be a, uh, for where you're at now? Or did were you just a very big enthusiast? I was a I was a heavy user uh, enthusiast, but I wasn't a brewer at that time, and so it wasn't until I was starting to get into non-alc and more specifically had that request from my customers, "Can you get us craft non-alc?" and I couldn't source it. That's really when I got into trying to learn about brewing. You know, one of the smart things I did is is I got a friend who actually knew a lot more than I did about brewing and brought him into the uh, into the equation. I had to bribe him with with some alcoholic beer i'll have to i'll admit but you have to do what you got to do <laughs> right it was a good investment there he buys go. it now for currency he That's buys it. he you buys favors with alcohol do, he doesn't drink yeah. it but he just uses it to yeah. buy favors yes now ted for anyone else that may be listening this may be an issue for them may be curious with with the crohn's disease is it normal that you need to go no alcohol at all or was it just is it something you have to kind of see how it works for the individual yeah, I, I think it's the latter. I, you know, for me, that was that was the case. I wouldn't say it's prescriptive for everyone with, with Crohn's disease. I think, you know, just in general moderation and just and being able to if you if you are going to enjoy alcohol and, and drink a great craft, alcoholic craft beer, you know, as Brian said, it's it's easy to uh, intermingle a great non-alcoholic beer now. Sure. Like our, yeah. our product and quite a few other products out there are, are so much better than they used to be that you can do that and say, Hey, I'm just, all of these are great craft beer, whether it's half a percent alcohol or whether it's 7%. And on that note with the half percent or less than half percent, do you, do you personally see any issues if you have, you know, several of your beers or several NA beers, is there enough to cumulatively cause an issue? No, I've never, I've never experienced that. Um, I, I think for me, you know, and this is just self self diagnosis sure. and, and, right. and understanding what happens when when I consume alcohol. I think it is the concentration that puts me in in trouble when I have. And, and the issue is when you have one, you kind of open the door to maybe maybe I'll have another. And yeah. uh, you know, I just it's a dangerous uh, it's a dangerous door to open for me. I open that door all later. the time. Right. I don't like to close that door, but I do like to open. Brian slings it open. Hello, Temptation. How you been? <laughs> How you been? Come Good on to in. see you again. Good to see you again. What's it been? Three days? Yeah, it's been three hours. I don't remember. Whatever. Come on in. So, do you? If you, uh, do you still run the uh, the the non alcoholic importing business on the side, or is that did you get rid of that? Yeah, it, it still is up as a website for you know just for informational purposes, but. Um, you know, that was that was one of the unfortunate things is I had to make a choice that I either had to pursue our own craft beer or I had to continue with that business. And I couldn't really do both. I just didn't have the the bandwidth. I didn't have the time uh, to do both. So I chose to do the the craft non up beer. And I think in time we'll we'll start to, you know, those those largely those customers supported me in that in that change. Um, but I think uh, over time we'll come back to some of those customers we had to. Uh, we had to make a tough choice on. Yeah. Now, the reason I asked that is I was thinking here just now, uh, you had non-alcoholic spirits on there. I'm, I was wondering, have you ever done a non-alcoholic Boilermaker? And I'm curious if there's good combinations there. That's that's where my mind goes with this. I haven't, but uh, you've now put it on my list. So there you go. All right. See? 
Re- please report back. I want yeah, to know what, what a good combination goes. is. Also, I need to try a non-alcoholic spirit. I've never done yeah, spirits. We'll have to we'll have yeah. to take a look at that and, and definitely see what we can do there. So uh, personally, what are your favorite styles? Where have your favorite styles changed from when you were an alcoholic craft beer drinker to non-alcoholic? Yeah, my my styles have have actually moderated. Like when I when I started in craft beer, it was it was all about the IPA, the, the hoppier the better and and Today, you know, 15 years later, I'm I'm definitely more towards the center of uh, lighter beers, gozes, the limes, the blondes, um, our pale ale, I think is fantastic. So uh, I tend to be a bit more of a middle of the road drinker now than I was 15 years ago, but uh, still enjoy the occasional IPA and the, the stout uh, has a home, uh, certainly in the winter on those cold days. I, I enjoy that one too. Those snowy days like today. You know, it being cold makes me think that shipping is going to be kind of dangerous with non-alcoholic beers. You don't have that alcohol in place to keep them from freezing over. A little buffer there. Exactly. So how do you handle the shipping with that? Or maybe we should, you know what, we should tease that. We're going to tease come that. Back to that. And we're saying yes. we're teasing because we're out of time right exactly. now. Exactly. <laughs> but we'll be back very soon. You are listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Come back and join us for more from Partake Brewing. Hey, heads up for you. Uh, Joey said we've been running a little short, so we can uh, we can squeeze about another 10 seconds or so. I think we're probably in that ballpark anyhow. Yeah. But I don't think we had time to get. To I, I knew we really didn't. I realized. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. I, He's like, Brian. Ugh. But I recovered it instead of, let, instead of just tossing it over and Good just letting you, it Brian. happen. Good for you. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I, I learned from my mistakes. Slowly. But eventually I do. Slowly. All right. So next segment, uh, I think we're going to talk. Uh, uh, what was your question as we were going out there? Oh, yeah. The cold weather and shipping. Cold weather stuff, shipping. Because we'll they ship directly that. to people's yeah. houses. So we're going to talk about brewing non alcoholic beers. And if I think we're going to get up to like sober October tears to adulting, probably is what we'll yeah. go for in the next one there. It so. seems like a, a good goal yep you want a beer us brian out oh of the, yeah out of the, um, t- the tiny fridge or yeah where hey, are we going you got us tiny fridges over there yeah i get the uh oh those are probably still sitting in the speaking of cold uh, yeah if you want to move those down oh we already did Nathan. Yeah, okay right. cool going pale we're Good going deal. pale pale does that sound like the right direction to go ted i'll join Wrong you guys pal. there we oh, go yeah. let's do it it is the right direction this is what's happening See, you know, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy going out and having a few beers and chilling, getting, I don't even know that I so much care for a buzz anymore, to be honest with you, but the relax, you know, relax with that. And, and I think part of that is just chilling out, having a drink, you know? So now I will say this too, Ted, were you into like big barrel age stouts? As a craft drinker, did you get into that territory? No, I didn't. I think that okay that came after I uh, I started having my issues. Gotcha, gotcha. Because that's because I probably really for the dig, best he didn't. Those are yeah. Because I really dig those. So you know, on the NA side, I don't mind enjoying these, but and some of those, the fl- the alcohol is a key component of the flavor profile. You, you want know? it to be boozy, and so when of those you've cases, got a yeah. 13, 14, 19 percent beer. The alcohol is a component of the overall flavor. Yeah, if you can get so. away with it, get find one that people recommend and just get a little sip, like a tiniest little taste. Just get it on your mouth and see what see what you're missing there, and then okay. come up with a way to do it. Na. So, <laughs> yeah, I would like to sit. Well, you know what? Maybe he it, shouldn't sip it because if, he's like, "Damn, I'm missing this. I'm missing this." If they're doing <laughs> Na spirits, then maybe. Yeah, you, you know, know what? Who knows? Barrel agent and Na bourbon. We've I got to. Uh, we've got to figure. If there is an Na spirit company listening to this. Give us a shout. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk. Let us sample your wares. Yeah, that's right. Send us some NAs. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm not even sure where. I would imagine the, the the liquor stores around here probably have them somewhere on the shelf, right? You you worked at one. Oh, did you have any? Did you have any? Seed Lip. That's okay. one I've I have heard, heard of. of that one. Do yeah. you know that one, Ted? Seed Lip? Yeah, they were one of the early pioneers in in uh, non-elk spirits. They're out of the, okay. uh, the UK, I believe. Okay. Do you also drink non-alcoholic spirits or do you stick with your beers? 
Yeah, not not at home, but I I certainly see them out in um, on premise. If, uh, right. if I'm having a mocktail, you know, I'd say maybe twenty five percent of the time they're they're using a non elk spirit as part of that uh, that mocktail. Okay. Now, do they do like with the non alcoholic spirits? Do they go for like a bourbon, a whiskey? Or anything? Have you tried any of those? And can they capture that? Because again, that seems like one that the alcohol is kind of an important component of the flavor profile. Yeah, like my my experience is um, with products from maybe five or six years ago. So I think there's a new, uh, you know, a new evolution of those in in the last year or two that I haven't tried yet, but I think could be interesting. Uh, okay. All right. Anyways, I think there's lots of lots of companies out there trying to uh, trying to tackle that. So, all right. I think in the coffee world they call it waves, right? First oh wave, yeah, second first wave, wave, third yeah, wave. Yeah. So, what wave of craft beer are we in? Oh, I have no idea. We haven't. We've all been. We've all been too liquored up to even notice. Probably. What wave of NA are we in? Second wave? Probably second at That's least. What, what I, do you I would think, say second. Dad? What would yeah. be your guess there? Yeah, I would say second. I would say Probably second, you know guys, right? yeah. guys like us and athletic, like we're we're wave one companies. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, 2017 for us, and I think uh, 2018 for athletic. So, you know, um, seen a lot more guys jump in the space now, but I think it's largely because of the success of companies companies like ours. Sure, you got to have someone out there. You know that what what do they call it? You know the uh, pioneers. Or well, something? pioneers. Viability. Blazers uh, that yeah. shows the market viability and that's you yeah. know we even have um we've got a little local place out here in, in atlanta we have a place that brews you know contract brews for na now as well and you know we see more and more and more dr keith villa as i'm sure you're probably aware knowing the na scene with uh you mm-hmm. know with syria yeah he's he's got that. uh well, his are NA, but they they also carry with them a different kind of buzz too, right? <laughs> well, he has both. He does. Yeah. He has some with and without. So, like the ones he sent us were not. Yeah. There's no THC in what yes. we got. Yes, unfortunately. So. <laughs> yes, right. Well, I mean, over here we could actually get in trouble with that, so maybe it's fortune. We right. Get, we could get fortunate. raided here. None of that for like you, that. Brian Stoner. <laughs> pothead. Just Hot. look at him. You can tell. Hophead or pothead? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes to both. Right. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to save it for the show, but we're going to ask you about that as well, Ted, because we know there's been some uh, crossover episodes of non-alcoholic beer and THC. That's so, right. You know what? Speaking of that, let's get back into it. We'll see if we can do it. Uh, here we go. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lombowski. Condolences. The bums lost. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout-out to one of our great radio affiliates, WRKQ, 1250 AM in Madisonville, Tennessee. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WRKQ every Saturday at noon. Now, let's get back to Partake Brewing. Ted, as we went to break there, Brian threw a teaser at us. And we were talking about those temperatures dropping up there in the northern states and into the Canadian provinces. And as you ship your product in the winter, is the lower temperatures an issue because of the lack of alcohol? Yeah, I'd say in Canada, it's an issue regardless of the alcohol content. It gets so so cold up here sometimes. Oh, sure. Okay, right. Yeah, I, cu- I cut my teeth on the uh, on the, the non-alc uh uh, e-commerce business back in 2013, my first winter, that was a tough learning experience. We oh, lost, I bet. Yeah. We lost a lot of shipments to cold weather. So, you know, we've, we've tried to mitigate that by getting our e-commerce warehouses closer to consumers, spends less time out there, try to get uh, uh signature required. So it doesn't, you know, stay on someone's sure. porch right. for, for two days. So, you know, we've, we've learned some lessons the hard way uh, around that, but uh uh, we're much better at it uh, these days at getting getting the product to people in a condition that they want. So yeah. there's not really any technology out there for keeping things warm on the ship. I've gotten stuff there's that's heat packs. Fro- I mean, I've gotten stuff that's kept frozen. Sure. Actually, was still frozen when it arrived, which is really impressive. But uh, heat packs, I guess, technically, I I've never think, seen that before, though. Well, I mean, I guess if you insulate, uh, Ted, you may have you ever looked into that? 
I won't run my mouth not knowing what I'm talking about here. Well, I will. Yeah, it, we, we think it was uh, maybe a little cost prohibitive. And That's you, know, you could I always mean. get a battery yeah. pack and put it on your box and keep it heated, but it, it seems oh, yeah. Very extreme. So, yeah. And then you also go into the fact you don't want warm beer. You don't want to have it too hot. So you've got to get it in that. Oh, yeah. Like keep it right in that. Man, when they invent, invent seller temp shipping technology, the beer world's going to go crazy. Yeah. Keep it right at 55 degrees. There's a little no air matter. conditioning unit on the outside yeah, of the little box. little tiny compressor on the side of a cardboard box. <laughs> uh, it's a heat there pump. It's a heat pump. That's it does it, both. Man. It'll keep we'll it cold it cold in the summer and Absolutely. warm in the winter. That's it. Uh, Ted, the process for non-alcoholic beer. Um, I know that uh, with some brewers, it's pretty guarded right now because there are a few different methods in that. But can you share kind of you know how you do it? Are you able to tell us a little bit about your process to do non-alcoholic beers? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, at a high level, we're, I call it a bit of a Frankenstein process. We, okay. we looked at, you know, when we were looking at creating a method, the true, the two prevailing methods in the market at that point were dealkalization. You brew a 5% beer, you, you separate the alcohol and then, you, you know, what's left over is your non-alc beer. Um, that separation can happen either with a temperature separation or, I think more recently guys are getting into microfiltration, which is a little, a little gentler on the beer and the beer uh, tends to taste a little better with the new separation technology. On the other end of the spectrum, there's what's called arrested fermentation. And I think a lot of the brewers in Europe are using that method where they have a lot of process control in their brewery. They pitch yeast to start to ferment the product, but then they uh, cool down the yeast to a point where the, the yeast doesn't metabolize the, the sugars into alcohol, they filter out the yeast, and then they're left with a, a non-alc beer that tends to be higher in sugar, a little bit sweeter. So we, we tried to break down both those methods and try to pick what we thought were the best uh, steps or the best, uh, the best ways to do it from either process and sort of re reassemble them into what we use as a process today. Uh, so what that, that fermentation method sounds like that's you got to keep your eye on that one, right? Know exactly when to get it there. Cause it home brewing beer, you just wait till your yeast goes you until know, it stops your yeah. terminal. Until yeah. It just quits exactly. fermenting there. So I had heard that there were yeast varieties out there that, that actually did not produce alcohol or produced very minimal amounts. Is that, is that a thing yet? Or is that just a rumor? Cause I think, I think I heard that some big brewers were using something like that where it wasn't even Heineken. Yeah. I think Heineken where, where they yes. had, they may have had a special variety of yeast that really just didn't produce much or any alcohol at all, but got you got ate your the carbonation. sugars, ate the sugars, gave you the carbonation, the ate okay. the sugars, but didn't give you that. So any, anything like that out there that's available to you and on, on your level? Yeah, I think there is like, there's lots of experimentation going out there on out there. Um, you know, we haven't, we haven't used that method uh, ourselves, so I, I can't speak to its efficacy, but uh, yeah, I think there's, I think there's room for new innovation and in, in brewing around non-alc and, and brewing in general. So pretty as a consumer first, I'm pretty excited to see some of these new iterations and new innovations come out and everyone that kind of adds to non-alc being a much more exciting category and much more variety and acceptance for people like me and, and people who are just choosing to, to moderate a little bit with their, their drinking. I think it's a, it's a great thing for, for the category. You know, I keep saying things like like craft in a being kind of in an, in its infancy, but you know, as Americans are wont to do, I forget Europe. Europe's been doing this for a long, long for, time for so, a while. Yeah. So, are there things that the Germans and, and other Europeans are doing that need to come over to the way we're doing things here in America or Canada? Yeah, I, I think think for them, like you you guys were talking about it. It's like it it's the the social context of drinking in europe is much more about just getting together and spending time with each other and that 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 personal time in in north america i think we've been fed ads for a long time that said okay if you're not drinking alcohol or large amounts of alcohol you're not going to be fun you're not going to be cool you're not going to be accepted and i think there's a there's a decoupling of that there's a pushback particularly with younger gen z uh millennial consumers they're pushing back on some of that messaging and saying hey we're going to we're going to chart our own path. There's, there's room in our lives for alcohol, but there's also room for, for non-alcohol. And I don't think we're being, we're going to be defined by how we drink and what we drink. And there's not so much like when I was younger, my younger partying days, if you didn't drink, you were, 
Yeah, mocked, you were ridiculed. Oh man, come on, you know, come on, don't be lame. One. You know, I don't think, like you said, that's people are not letting themselves get into that. And I think on the other side of that, people aren't, you know, they're not giving them grief for it either. So. Yeah, I think people are more accepting of the fact that somebody might not be drinking because, well, people are now aware that alcoholism is a problem with a lot sure. of people. And it's a good thing that those people are not drinking. You do not want to egg them back into it. You want them to uh, be good because they could be ruinous to them and to you if, they, if they're bad. So Right. More yeah. positive attitude. Exactly. More accepting. Always. Of people good having thing. issues. Yes. Correct. Yes. Now, Ted, good timing on getting you on here for the interview. We are smack in the middle of October, which, of course, as we mentioned earlier, is mid 80s in Georgia and snow in Canada. So good time of the year. But what both countries celebrate is we're in the middle of sober October, right? Exactly. Now, you guys already took dry January from us drinkers. You got sober October. Are you going to take over all the months? Is it just going to slow? Are we going to have seasonal creep here? No. What do you suggest, Brian? No yes. alcohol November? Yeah, no no alcohol November. And uh, oh, it's, it's a mofo. Don't drink no, December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So. Don't drink December. Yes, yes. It, it seems like seasonal sobriety creep is what, we, what is. we're running into. It's creeping from January all the way into October already. Tim. We'll get there. Yeah. But with sober October, Ted, what is uh, is that like an awareness campaign type of thing? Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the history of of that is, but it's just become you know it, it's become pervasive in society. People are just getting behind. Hey, this is you know. I think in October it's a way to kind of get yourself on good footing going into the holiday season. I think that's how a lot of people look at it and say, Hey, look, I'm I'm going to be starting November December holiday season from a from a healthy a healthier spot. Good point. Those, Good point. I know those months are uh, you know there's a lot of partying, a lot of drinking, a lot of getting together, a lot of eating. Um, so I, I think people view it that way. But it's you know I think those month uh, themes are a way for people to kind of get behind it. It's also a way for them to communicate it to other people that are are skeptical of of that type of thing, and and it uh, allows people to draw pe draw their friends and family in and say, hey, why don't you participate with me? these things are, are better as a group and it's a way for people to discover, Hey, what, what other options are out there? And, you know, can I, can I just take a healthier stance on a, on a, on a full year basis? And this is a way to kind of experiment in a, a maybe a bit more fun, a bit more fun and collaborative way. You know, I hadn't even thought to you mention it, that dry January and sober October form a holiday sandwich with November and December. They do. So it's, it may, you know what, let's, let's behave before and after, cause we know what's coming in the middle here. And it's right after the end of uh, Oktoberfest where people right? are drinking liters of stuff, which makes me think because that tends to Oktoberfest tends to creep into October, creeps even though it's bit. mostly over. So half sober October, let's, let's compromise here. <laughs> if you make it a couple of days and you go, if you go 28 days, then you can count that as a success, right, Ted? I'd say I'd say it's a success. Yeah, that's there a, you that, go. That's at least Absolutely. one month of the year. Like, like twenty-five working days. Let's go working days and make it twenty-five. Quit pushing your <laughs> luck, Brian. Quit pushing your luck. You are listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We need to take another break, but we'll be back very soon with more from Partake Brewing. Do, 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 do. So, Ted, we're getting ready to go into the fourth segment here. So is there anything we have not mentioned you want us to make sure we do mention? Yeah, I just for us, I'd like to mention, haven't talked about like the 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 drivers maybe in the category. And I think, you know, health and wellness is is part okay, of it. Cool. And then our, our tie into that is, you know, natural ingredients, which is normal to beer, but also products as low as 10 calories. All right. You have a ten. You have a ten calorie product. Yeah, the pale ale you're tasting is uh, ten calories. No kidding. How about wow. that? I'm gonna drink twelve of them. Wow, because I think I've seen these around fifty, sixty, but I didn't. Yeah. I don't think that. I mean, that's that's, that's something. That's pretty low. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty low. Pretty low. I I noticed that. I I hadn't picked up on that theme before doing the research for the show, but the, a lot of these are yeah. extremely low in in terms of calories. Cool. Our, our team yes. like our team likes to joke. They say, you know what? The you burn more than ten calories drinking our beer, so we should sell it on like uh, you know late night TV as a 
is a weight loss program or something like that. That's Get it. you a stick of celery and drink drink you one of the uh, what was it the the pale ale. <laughs> the pale. There you go. Like it, yeah. it's negative calories. It. I'm like I'm losing weight so fast right now. <laughs> I think it's stout thirty. Uh, it's dark thirty over dark here. Dark thirty. Yeah, this is uh, the blonde is is fifteen calories according to this. Two grams of carbs, zero fat, one gram of protein. All right, and less than half a percent of alcohol. How about that? There you go. Yeah, fifteen calories. Crazy. Boom. And is I'm assuming that isn't a twelve ounce serving. It's not like uh, you know, a Coke will give you a thirty ounce can and say serving mm -hmm. four ounces. It's right. right. So for the full can. Yep. Cool. That's what it says on this one. That's impressive. The red is twenty five. The red is twenty five. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Give me some of that see, heavy it red. See, it, it seems high, right? When you when you put it in context. right when you put it next to the others, yeah. <laughs> Name him after a, an Austin Powers uh, a villain. <laughs> and their dark is three hundred and seventy five. Three hundred seventy five. Yeah. How about no. that now? <laughs> How many calories on the dark, Ted? Thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. You said 30? 30. Okay. Hey, 30 you know. In the dark. Well, you so you got to get to get the, the get that darkness. I'm I'm guessing you need a little bit more of something or other in there, so it's going to have calories with it. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know, Tim. I'm just Man. running my mouth. To get little, that dark, you're going to have You're going to have to have a little bit more blah. stuff in there. Yeah, exactly. They, so you know what? There's more stuff and things in that, which is where the excess I see that. I see that. Yes. Yes. Them carbs too. How about that? Yeah. I remember really caring and focusing very much on carbs once upon a time. I guess that's hot again. Or is it ever not be hot? I don't know. I know that now it's like the uh what do they call it? Ketogenic. Just avoid carbs, meats, vegetables, and uh keep it keep it carbs away. Pay I think paleo adds some in. There's 30 different varieties here. Cool, cool, cool. Ted, we're going dark over here, so we're ready for it. All right, shall we do this? Yes. Let's do it. The Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Cannibal, cannibal coming. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash beerguys. Patrons get cool perks like Beer Guys swag and commercial-free episodes. Now, let's get back to Partake Brewing. Partake Brewing. Ted, we found out some interesting info as we were at break there. Uh, you mentioned that your Pell is only 10 calories. Is that right? That's right. 10 calories for the whole can. For 12 ounces of non-alcoholic craft beer, 10 calories. Yeah. You can't get that in a regular beer. I'm used to seeing those numbers on things like seltzer, honestly. Sure. Uh, sure. That's a little surprising. I was unaware that they were so so low like that. But even we, we've we just opened the dark, which is, uh, I, I'm assuming this isn't called a stout. I think we've asked this before. There's some rules there. Is that right? Yeah, stout and ale and a few other terms are kind of uh, no-go zones for uh, for non-alc right now. Okay, so we have a pale rather than a pale. But IPA, you can go that because you didn't you don't have the the ale part on there, right? That's right. If we spelled okay. it out, we'd be, we'd be in trouble. Well, there trouble. And there are no the there are no dots in there, so you can say, oh no no, that's not IPA, it's IPA. It's IPA. Yeah, it's, it's IPA. A, it's a new style. It's a IPA. Yeah, big it's, in Canada. Yeah, so named, named after my aunt. My Aunt Ippa. Yeah, Aunt Ippa, exactly. right. But the dark uh, for stout lovers. Yes. Dark, rich, roasting moss, got all that stuff in there. And that kind of ties me into uh, another thing. A lot of people drinking this, not just, you know, the alcohol, but these are lower calorie. And there's people that are paying a lot more attention to that type of thing and what they eat and drink. Um, Brian. Brian's trimming down. He's getting... Yeah, yeah. He's I have, getting... I actually have lost a few ...slimmer and sexier yeah. there. So Brian is cognizant of that and... Uh, other people as well. So that's actually a big driver for this category. Is that right? Yeah, I think you're seeing that just in alcoholic beer too, right? You're having so many craft breweries come out with 100 calorie, sub 100 calorie beers. And that's being, you know, that's the growth area for them. And we're, you know, we're clearly quite a bit lower than that at 10 calories. And uh, yeah, health and wellness is is definitely driving 
a lot of new people to our category. So with that said, do you, uh, have you ever considered making a beer that's not, you know, or a non-alcoholic beer that is not like low calorie? Like we were talking earlier about the pastry stouts, like a non-alcoholic kind of pastry stout, like, you know, a milk stout or something like that, that is going to have to have a few more calories, you know, a little higher up, a little more body, that sort of thing. Do you get requests for things like that? Or are your, are your customers mostly like, Hey, we're athletes. We want to keep the calories down and just rock and roll. Yeah, I think in some ways we've we've defined ourselves as like the the low calorie non alk beer or the low the lowest calorie beer, you know, out there. Um, so it's hard for us to extend beyond that from a from a core products point of view. From a from a special release point of view, I think we have a little bit more latitude to do that, and we've seen some some higher calorie products. A Rattler, for instance, something we we launched this past summer was was higher in calories because we use cold pressed juice to to make that rattler. So I think from a core, a core audience perspective, we really want to stick to our knitting and be, be known for being ultra low in calorie. And we have a little bit of latitude to, to go outside of that with the, uh, with the special releases that we do. I have, I have an idea for you. It could be cheat day dark and let them know right up front cheat on the can. Yeah. This is your cheat day drink. You know, it's not, it doesn't have alcohol in it, but it has like 800 calories. It's, it, it it's all- straight up maple syrup. Right. In all fairness, Ted, you can stuff plenty of marshmallows and chocolate and oh, maple yeah. syrup and that in a non-alcoholic beer and still be non-alcoholic. And we did have a peanut butter uh, stout or peanut butter dark ale. It was, that was it, it was really marvelous. Yeah. It, it was marvelous. It was definitely non-alcoholic, right? Yeah, non-alcoholic. And it was definitely I don't do not believe it was low calorie. <laughs> I doubt it. I don't I didn't look, but I would say you're probably right. From the taste of it, you're probably I right. want another one of those and I've looked for it. And I can't find it. It's yeah. a special See? release. I'm hoping it comes back. You're out of luck. You're out of luck. Well, Ted, we've got uh, we sampled your lime, which one is one of your special releases. We we totally skipped over the peach goes a sample and that went right to the dark here. Uh, but what else is happening at Partake? What can uh, your fans look for? In- yeah, so we, uh, our first, first batch of IPA ever was, it was a disaster. It came out way too hoppy, way too hazy. And, uh, you know, I, I had to fess up to my early backers. I said, hey, this isn't the product I was expecting for you. Um, we got through that. We got through that uh, period of time. And a lot of customers have come back to me and said, hey, can you bring that product back? Uh, we called it Hoppy Accident. Um, OK. All right. So we're, we're going to bring back something that's that's more akin to that first batch that we that we ever brewed that wasn't exactly to spec, but uh, definitely created some fans in the process. So that's uh that's on the the radar for us in the next few months. So it came out and you thought it was a train wreck. Am I exaggerating there, but the fans liked it? Yeah, it it was, um, like I said, I, I, I personally had migrated a little bit away from the hoppier right, okay. gotcha. types of IPAs. Yeah. And, and I had this bright, it was still very uh, fragrant, very much an IPA, but it was bright and clear. And so when I got the first product back from the brewery, I was like, okay, this isn't, this isn't the spec. And so I needed to, I needed to fess up with my customers and say, Hey, look, this wasn't what I was intending to give you. Um, so I'm not going to push it on you and say it is. And so I think that was a, a really important learning for me is that, you know, just being transparent and, and, and truthful with your community, they're going to, they're going to pay that back in spades for you. So, you know, that was an, an important lesson for us. And I think, it uh, it gives us this fun fun thing to revisit and go back to and right and uh, touch base with those early backers in a special way. And that's why you take good notes on your brewing because oh, yeah. Ted's like we it didn't come out the way we wanted to, but we know how to we know how to mess it up again. Exactly, so we, we'll, we know we'll what we did wrong. We can do there, it right? again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You know something we've talked about is there's a blending of uh, other substances into non-alcoholic beers that we've seen because you can do that with a non-alcoholic beer. Am I correct? Is, is cannabis legal nationwide in Canada now? Yeah. Cannabis is pretty, uh, that's pretty what I thought. widely available in Canada. Yeah. Cause Afria or, uh, was it Afria? I think it's Afria Sweetwater? that bought Sweetwater. Yeah. They're so, Canadian. Yeah. Is there any crossover episodes planned, Ted? Yeah. We get that question asked a fair amount. Um, uh-huh. and we definitely have interest from, 
companies in the cannabis space. So right now we want to stick to our lane and say, hey, look, there's lots of opportunity for non-alc. That's that's kind of why we exist is for the non-alc consumer. And so we're, right. we're pretty focused on staying within that. There's lots of opportunity for us, lots of growth. Um, not to say that we wouldn't we wouldn't uh, look at that with the right partnership, but uh, our focus is really around the health and wellness aspect of our, our product. And I think we've got a lot of a lot of great opportunity in front of us and a lot of innovation in front of us, uh, strictly a non-alc beverage. Does it add a lot of regulation? Is it a lot? I know that when we were talking to uh, Keith Mutasiria, how how difficult it was. He could only sell his product in dispensaries and his non-alcoholic could get out. It was easier to get that out because there were a lot less, you know, hoops to jump through. Is it similar up in Canada? Like just if you were to get in that space, it would be so much more difficult to make your product available to consumers. Yeah, the, the path to market is much more regulated. There's there's fewer stores. Um, branding is a challenge. You're not allowed to brand it in the same way. Um, so, you know, we'd probably lose some of our, you know, some of what we created over the last few years, which is a, a very recognizable and, and trusted brand. I can understand stuff, that, man. yeah. The regulations there. Do you... Um... I don't want to turn the end of the show into the cannabis show, but <laughs> do you have to use dispensaries in that in Canada like they do here in the States? Yeah, it's very, it's very tightly controlled, the retail okay. environment. And so, yeah, our, our, our ability to get product to consumers would be highly restricted to that. To that, Even channel. with like a CBD, if it weren't THC, just because that's, there's a fair amount of health and wellness around the, the concept of CBD versus, you know, the THC. Yeah. Those, those two tend to be, aligned from a regulatory point of view in Canada. Okay. So, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, I don't think we'd benefit a lot from, from just being in key, CBD from, from that perspective. Interesting okay. stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. And Ted, as we're wrapping up here, we do not want to miss out letting people know these are award-winning beers, correct? Most recently this year at the world beer awards, uh blonde and Pell took silver. Your IPA took bronze, correct? Yeah. And we won, uh, we won the gold medal in 2018 for the pale, which was, pretty pretty amazing so good stuff good stuff how did you do at gabf this year uh we were not gabf um all right uh, that's one we need to we need to get to all right next year right the a next year, is it because out. it's the a part it's the great american it's not the great canadian beer festival well i, I mean he I is here though. like we had uh, do uh do canadian breweries do they do they get involved with that not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, it's it's all American yeah, beer, huh? Well, I mean, well, I'm not surprised. They does say Great American Beer Festival in there. Not okay. that not that they'd be excluded. We don't check passports at the door well, of those. I don't think we need to find the GCBF. Yeah, yeah. all right. Let's yeah, the Great story. Canadian Brew Festival. We're sure, stuff. there is one. Well, we weren't allowed in the country at that point. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It's blocked out. That's a good point. It was Ted. Uh, if people want to keep up with what's going on at Partake Brewing, what is the best way for them to do that? Yeah, you can follow us uh, on on social. It's Partake Brewing on Instagram, uh, website drinkpartake.com. And uh, you can get me personally on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, happy to connect with uh, all beer lovers out there. So Fantastic. Ted, thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for you having me. You bet. And that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Join us next week as we talk to Covert Artisan Ales. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. Clear. Good. I have a point to make. What's your point? What's your, yeah. So you're saying Great American Beer Festival. Yes. Canada is in North America. Oh, well, okay, it's not the fair. great, it's not the G-N-A-B-F, it's the no. G-A-B. Yeah, so I guess it could be. I mean, you know. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow it there. The did, you hear the, did you hear that, Ted, yeah, from, uh, see, Ken's there with yeah, you, man. Ken's, Ken's on. Yeah, Ken's he's, he's there. On. It is. The, the Americas. The Americas. Yeah. The, the Great Americas. The Great Americas Beer Fest. I easy only enough. have to add an S to the end That's of it. easy yeah. enough, man. And if you had a few, you probably say it that way. Probably, yes. Probably. Yeah. Hey, Stephen. Stephen Pete. Steven, do you brew any NAs over there at Kettle Rock? I think it, I don't see know if, if he, we can get them. See I, if he's still around. The last I checked, he didn't there. have any, but that doesn't okay. mean they're not doing it. So yeah, I think down here we see a lot. I, I don't know so much non-alcoholic. Well, some seltzers. They'll do some NA seltzers. Yeah. Do a little flavor there. 
you know, give some people some sparkle and some flavor. Well, some people actually still do sodas, which they seems do. antiquated yeah. at this point. <laughs> root but, beer. Yeah, I, I haven't heard I that like a good root beer, while, while, but we yeah. do see root beers on tap here. So, yeah, good we stuff. Find, we, we find a lot of people like the Goza in particular as a as a seltzer alternative. I could see that. Sure yeah. enough, you know what? I know I would get drink off it. Here, yeah, the peach grab goza. the peach Goza, Ted. Let's see what we got here before you go. And and that just came out. You just re released that relaunched that recently right yep, he's got yeah, one right we, there we did it as a special release it's got that nice tactile label that uh we're going to take to sports, sports grip. venues there everywhere. you go the sports grip <laughs> but uh yeah we, we we are very happy with the way this came out and and this is going to become part of our core lineup because it had such a great right. uh, great response so what happened with the mango one? Was it just not as popular? Because that's intriguing. I know there was a mango goza version too. Don't. Yeah, we kind of, you know, we kind of split a batch. We did a base goza, and then we did a little fla uh, some trials on different flavors. And you know, again, we went back to our community and said, "Hey, what do you guys like the best?" And they came back and said, "Hey, we like the peach best." And peach it is. Peach it is. I like the peach in this. I remember, I remember when we got this one fresh. Ted we really enjoyed the peach note in it. Yeah. Is that a, is that a Georgia thing or are you guys really just you guys love the peach? You know, it's I a think it's thing, yeah. Yeah, and I think here in all honesty, I think a lot of it to be is more just that's what we're known for. So that's, you know, that's kind of where they go. I remember years ago, actually our first episode, episode 0 of Beer Guys Radio was with um was that Clown Shoes? Comfort? Oh, no, it was Clown Shoes. Clown that's Shoes right. and they did a Georgia version of one of their beers and it was you know, you got to get peaches in there. You got to do that. You got to get peaches, peaches. and Georgia or peanuts. Peaches. Yeah. It's, yep. Because we're, uh, yeah, Jimmy Carter and peanut. Confession. Yeah. I've been in Atlanta, Georgia over 20 years now. Never seen a peach tree. I didn't, Other than road signs. I was going to, you know, I, I'm now that I'm thinking about, it, I'm sure I've seen them. You know, the, the thing is, is a lot of times, especially in the city, to prevent there from being a lot of fruit rotting and falling in the ground, they, they plant like male only trees. So you could see peach trees, but only the male variety oh, okay. that does not bear fruit. You know, I would be would not be surprised if you've seen a ton of them and didn't realize it because they never bear fruit. I need to modify my statement. Driving down through central and south Georgia, I've seen oh. I've seen the trees, but not in the Atlanta. So. Well, there's not a lot of room for orchards here anymore. Yep, true. <laughs> hey, Ted, hang tight just a second. I'm going to wrap up here with our online stream, and we'll uh, we'll be right back with you. Uh, folks, thanks for joining us. Uh, Steve and the whole crew, thanks for chatting with us some and uh, sharing info on the Great America's Beer Fest. Yes. Which we're going to push that. But uh, we'll be back next week with Covert Artisanals. Make sure to come join us. We'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs>